Ukrainian vampire drones equipped with infrared cameras have become the nightmare of Russians on the front lines. These drones are capable of operating effectively at night, hitting both stationary and moving targets. This is stated in the Forbes article. The publication's analyst, David Axe, focuses on how a UAV from the Nemesis group recently successfully hit a moving tank at night. The expert notes that at the beginning of the full-scale Russian invasion of Ukraine, most drones had only daylight cameras, making them ineffective at night. However, Ukraine has recently begun deploying UAVs equipped with infrared cameras as showering Russian positions with dozens of grenades blowing up their fortifications and vehicles. These drones wreaked havoc on Russian troops who are used to feeling safe at night. At first, the vampire drone raids were aimed primarily at stationary targets, but as Ukrainian UAV operators gained experience, they began to destroy targets as they moved. Our pilots demonstrated the highest level of skill, the Ukrainian military's drone branch boasted. The drone's third grenade missed, but it didn't matter. The damaged tank veered off the road. Its three crew clambered out from under the vehicle's punctured metal shell and scurried away. Mikhailo Fedorov, Ukraine's Minister for Digital Transformation, said the country's drones fundamentally changed the situation on the battlefield. Fedorov predicted the separate unmanned system forces would accelerate technological advancements. Night capability is one of the branch's priorities. Early in the wider war, most drones were strictly equipped with daylight cameras and were ineffective at night. Late last year, the Ukrainians began deploying so-called vampire drones fitted with infrared cameras, giving the soon-to-be independent military drone groups their first true nighttime capability. Analysts add that such drones attack the target from above, so artificial intelligence for targeting is less useful here. That is why the skill of the operator in controlling the vampire drone plays a decisive role. The vampire drones wreaked havoc on unprepared Russian troops who had come to equate darkness with protection. Dropping grenades by the dozen, the drones blew up parked vehicles and wrecked fortifications. The Russians called the night drones Baba Yagas, after a forest witch from Slavic folklore. A vampire drone might weigh up to 40 pounds and cost more than $10,000. Instead of flying into the targets like an inexpensive FPV does, a vampire drone bombs it from overhead. Russia has lost another Su-34 fighter jet. It was reportedly shot down by an American F-16 that was handed over to Ukraine, which became the basis for attacks on Washington and aid to Kiev. The National Interest writes that at least three dozen Su-34s have already been destroyed during the war with Ukraine, which is almost a quarter of the Russian Federation's pre-war fleet of 140 aircraft. It is noted that combat losses outpace production. Russia is on the offensive in Ukraine, but this incident can be seen as a major setback because the Su-34s are the aircraft that Russia uses to destroy Ukrainian infrastructure, explains geopolitical analyst Irina Sukaman, president of Scarab Rising. It is noteworthy that the news of the loss of the Russian plane immediately appeared on social networks and from the accounts of pro-Kremlin mill bloggers who regularly report on the progress of the war on Telegram. They are critical of the military actions, even if they demonstrate support for Vladimir Putin. These propagandists are trying to make Ukraine into a villain and thereby create anti-Ukrainian sentiment among their own population, said Susan Campbell, a distinguished 
professor at the School of Communication at the University of New Haven. Even when mill bloggers mourn the loss of the Su-34 and criticize the conduct of military operations, this is also aimed at inciting anti-American sentiment, she said. The use of the F-16s here is important because pro-Kremlin propagandists are looking for any excuse to attack U.S. aid to Ukraine and to prove that Ukraine is just a proxy for the CIA slash MI6, etc., who are directly attacking Russia with their equipment, Zuckerman suggested. It's another way to discredit NATO and support their conspiracy theories that the alliance has been plotting to attack or invade Russia all along. It's also a good way to spin the failure and the fact that Russian air superiority has now been effectively weakened. Even despite criticism of Russia's military leadership, the message that NATO poses a serious threat remains in force. The spirit of these posts from pro-Kremlin bloggers is clearly intended to highlight the dangers of NATO and the possibility of future such attacks, perhaps as a justification for new and more serious airstrikes in Ukraine or even a potential justification for taking provocative action against NATO. Zuckerman concluded.